Thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. In the last video I announced that I'm moving, so today I thought I'd share how I'm preparing for the move. Aside from practical things that I've been doing in my current apartment, I've also been to so many apartment showings around my area of choice in Stockholm. I think I've viewed over 60 places at this point, and some days I've been running with my phone in hand and looked at 10 to 12 apartments. Those days in particular, I feel lucky to have Surfshark VPN. I really appreciate the extra security that comes with it. Surfshark VPN encrypts my online data and keeps me safe when I surf on public Wi-Fi, which I do when I'm in the street or at a coffee shop in between showings. Another feature is that VPN allows you to surf the internet on a server that's outside your own country or even continent, so you can access websites away from where you are actually at. With Surfshark VPN I'm able to stream shows outside Sweden like for instance UK Channel 4, courtesy of a server located in London. Installing it is so easy, a few taps on your phone and a couple of clicks on your desktop keyboard and you're good to go. Click the link in the description box, use my promo code BENITA to get an amazing 83% discount and 3 additional months for free. Oh, also there's a 30 day money back guarantee so go sign up. So, I wanted to sell my apartment first before buying a new one. So the main purpose of viewing all these places was to narrow down what I want and need. Both in terms of more exact location and in terms of age and style of the apartment. I started out looking in a broader area of the city on the side where my son and my best friends live. I've only looked at buildings that are older than 1939. Then I crossed out places and specific streets that are highly trafficked. I also ruled up any walk-ups above the third floor. I was also hesitant about higher floors if there was a balcony because that felt scary. So after that I also had other preferences. An older building, preferably turn of the 20th century or older. At least some period features still intact. And by that I mean original floors, mouldings, trim, windows, radiators and or a fireplace or tiled stove. Nice to have would be a balcony that's easy to enclose for my cats. If no balcony, I'd love it if the building has a nice courtyard. Budget was also a major thing to consider. I looked at places that were really nice and pretty much turnkey for me and where I wouldn't need to spend a lot of money altering things. I also looked at more of project where I could buy something with good bones but with lots of cosmetic issues and where I would need to bring in some trades to do more advanced work as well as a lot of DIY. So that was me prepping for the move by seeing what's out there and what my wants and needs are in a new place. But then there was also a lot to do in my current place to get it ready for sale. First I picked a realtor. He came highly recommended by my former neighbors upstairs so it was an easy choice. We decided to prepare the sale by getting the photographer in and get the listing ready. Getting your place ready for a listing is pretty stressful. At least over here in Stockholm, listings usually have beautifully styled apartments that look like something out of a magazine. I worked with a really nice and talented photographer that the realtor sent over. I try to keep the styling simple, but not too bare. I bought fresh flowers, a couple of new plants and two green flower pots. I also made sure to have a nice soap and some fresh fruit out. I don't know how true it is, but I do believe in the strategy to remove the most personal items so the potential buyers can imagine themselves living there. So I removed all the loose cat-related items from the shots. I also removed the toilet brush, the toothbrush, the trash can, 
and some other things from the bathroom. I took down my YouTube play button. It just felt weird to have it up. The listing went up as coming, so if anyone was interested before the planned open house, they would get in touch with the realtor to possibly preview and place an early bid. Preparing for the showings is a whole different level in terms of getting ready. I know what I look for in places I tour, so I made sure my apartment was squeaky clean. When potential buyers can see dirt and grime, it's not that enticing to purchase, and if they have little imagination or are squeamish, it might be a deal breaker. I also made sure that everything was in good condition and switched out the lid and frame of the bathroom outlet that was broken. I had meant to do it, but having an open house really lit the fire under my butt to get it done. You'll regret not having done this sooner while you live there, but do fix what's broken before letting potential buyers see your home. When I bought my current apartment there were so many broken things, so I think a lot of people were put off, whereas I could still see the potential. When things are dirty and broken, you get the feeling that if they didn't care about showing the obvious faults to the place, what else is lurking? When I had the photographer there, I could just move things out of the way when he was working in the different spaces. When the showing takes place, those items need to be removed completely since you want your space to reflect what it looked like in the photos. I'm lucky to have a storage space in the basement where I could put a lot of it. I'm also lucky that there is a guest apartment in this building, so I booked that for mini bonus and myself while the showings take place. We can hang out in there for about an hour until the realtor texts and lets me know that the coast is clear. Another tip is to do a major declutter before showing your home. Not just the open surfaces, but inside cabinets too. People will open cabinets, and if they're shock full of stuff, it will give the impression that there isn't a lot of storage, and that may put them off. So if you know you're selling, start decluttering early so it's not on top of everything else you need to do when it's crunch time. So, those were the things I did to prepare for selling and moving. I'll soon share how it went, so subscribe if you want to tag along as I move to a new place. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, I really appreciate the support. If you're looking for sources for things, you might get lucky in the description box. There's a link that takes you to my website where I'm collecting all the links for you. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Hey då!